mother named me Rory Ferreira. I named myself Milo for stage presence purposes. Occasionally I call myself Scallops Hotel, Black Orpheus, Celeste King III. There was a valley of, uh, there was a valley of understanding. There was a valley of love. There was a valley of, um, to me, rap is like the philosophical arm of like black art, black culture. I mean, I listen to people like MF Doom, Del the Funky Homo Sapien, Serengeti, Bus Driver, and that really informed my philosophical mind. I mean, when I got to college, I knew a lot of philosophy by way of rap. And a lot of the stuff I was studying was, you know, language game stuff. Wittgenstein, Rorty, I'm very interested in language and how it works. Press him about his awkward views. Why you so quick to divide? So hate to divide, I cut two. Knowing it's impolite to Terry, I went about my way. And I don't my understanding of art, I mean, is that this is an arena where maybe freedom is possible. You know what I mean? And for me, as a black man in America, that interests me deeply. So yeah, when I'm making music, I'm limiting myself not at all. And I, I mean, I really have embraced that. Mind is it? It isn't always so reliable. Earthworm Nimrod preaching about survival in the orchestral. End of my freshman year of college, one of my best friends drowned, so I dedicated my first project to him. I wish my brother Rob was here, which is dedicated to Rob Espinosa. I sent that to a few blogs, and uh, one in particular that picked it up, The Needle Drop, reviewed it favorably. And it kind of launched my career, I guess. All of a sudden, one day, my band camp had spiked, and I hadn't even put the record out yet. And I was like, how could anyone know? Like, I'm not anyone. And then my friends were like, dude, Needle Drop reviewed it. Bless the soul of whoever you think you are, sun officiating to gooby fashion. I got to Los Angeles when I should have started my senior year of college but I had quit by that point. LA was the first time I'd ever been like thrusted into like the starving artist world, where I didn't really have money to eat. I was living in a bad area, wasn't safe. I'd move out there to put out my first record, and then I didn't get paid for the first record. And so LA was hard, man, kind of bitter times, really. Who that? This fellow who fashioned the flamethrower from ennui, astounding how we make a spectacle of the natural, impeccable babble. Upon moving back to Milwaukee, I started my own label called Ruby Out. And so, so the flies don't come was our first, our first release. So the flies don't come. I was really trying to find my own language, my own statements to make, my own sense of humor. It was really heady. I was reading a lot of Heidegger, but also reading like a lot of Elijah Muhammad. So it's like, oh. and I mean, that kind of tension is where all of my music from So the Flies Don't Come to present comes from. It's like, how is it that someone like Schopenhauer and Sun Ra are on the same exact wavelength? Like German idealist from the 17th century and a jazz musician from Birmingham. And I never put my own record out before. But the response was great. I'm like the DIY rap dude. Um, and I think people respond to that because it's not being done a lot. Mass Appeal did a poll. And the first round of the poll, they put my record against To Pimp a Butterfly, Kendrick Lamar's album. And I was with my mom and I was like, man, this is bogus. They put me up against the heaviest of all the hitters the first round, but I wound up beating him. And then it kept going and going. I beat Earl, I beat Drake, I beat all these dudes. I won the poll, best album of the year on Mass Appeal. And Mass Appeal is Nas's like publication. They had no idea who I was. I would say the best thing about doing my record, So the Flies Don't Come, is knowing someone like Nas, like a great poet, heard me rap. That's the coolest part to me.